I'll just sit right here. <laughs> you don't want me, I'd mess everybody up. <laughs> yeah, I can fake it. <laughs> I can just mouth the word. Good morning. Welcome to Epworth. We're glad that you're here to worship with us this morning. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Pastor Trish, and I serve here as lead pastor alongside Bill Jones, our pastor for youth and young adults, and we are so pleased that you're here with us this morning for our special Christmas cantata, the, hearing the story of Christ's birth through song. Uh, all of these people up here have put in so much work. They invited me to join them, but I declined because I love you. Uh, so just a few announcements as we begin our time together. First, we wanted to remind you of the times of our Christmas Eve services. There are three for you to choose from. A five o'clock family service here that's geared uh, towards small children, but people of all ages are welcome to join us. That will be here at five o'clock. There will be a service at seven o'clock at Jessup's Methodist Church, which is over in Hunt Valley, right off of York Road. A beautiful service um, with candlelight and hymns. So if you'd like to join us for that but need directions, you can let one of us know. And then we'll have our 11 o'clock service with candlelight and communion back here in the sanctuary at Epworth. And so we hope that you'll plan on joining us for one of those. And please invite your friends and neighbors if they need a place to worship on Christmas Eve as well. Um, the SPRC wanted me to make an announcement. You might have seen a box when you came in um, to, and got your bulletin this morning. There's a box in the very back on the table that says Epworth Staff Gifts. Our SPRC um, committee is um, asking for donations toward gifts for our staff that um, include, cover your ears, our music people and our uh, nursery workers. Um, and so we ask, it does not include the pastors. We're just looking for donations for, uh, for staff gifts. So if you are interested in, uh, in donating to that, you can just place your gift right back there in the box. And um, Ed Fischel, our SPRC chair, will make sure it gets to the appropriate place in time for Christmas. It's a way to show uh, our appreciation of them in just a small way. So we hope that you'll participate. Uh, am I leaving out announcements? Was there something else? Bill has an announcement. At the end of the service, we're going to be singing um, the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah. And so Elaine wanted me to let you know that if you would like music, I have extra copies. So during the passing of the piece, you can come grab one from me quickly if you would like to. There will also be words on the screen for you to sing along from your pew as well. But if you, if you read music and want a copy, I'll be standing up here at the front and you can grab one from me. Are there any announcements that I'm missing that I've somehow forgotten? All right, let's stand and greet one another in the name of Christ.
sorry I sent Sylvia down to grab something I forgot. So <laughs> <laughs> without her. You gotta come on just yourselves. It's closed and the children will stay up here during worship. So if your child needs a keep busy box, there are boxes in the very back and the ushers can help you. If they haven't gotten one already, there are small activities in there that they can do. We're still stalling? And today you will be hearing the story of Jesus' birth, which is a very important story, as you know. I don't know that I can stretch any more than that. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me... Just tell them to come early. Oh yeah, do there your were, announcements. There were a couple of corrections. Is this on? I don't know. There are a couple of corrections to uh, the bulletin anyway, and I, I'll take this moment, this opportunity to to make those. Um, our um, the solos. We've had a little switch in the solos for uh, the Zachariah. Um, that's a that's a typo. Gary Johansson is singing the solo for Zachariah. And Lindsay Matthews, who was doing Mary, is ill today. And so um, Emily Gradowski is going to fill in on that solo. Sorry. You can tell me. <laughs> we wait for them to get their stuff ready. Let's pray to open worship. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the excitement of the cantata and for the children and the bell choir, and we thank you for all of the work that they have put in to making this a blessing for everybody who hears. And we thank you that even when unexpected things come up, that you are still in our midst, helping us to worship you. And so we pray that you would center our hearts in you so that everything we hear and say together today might be pleasing to you. We pray these things in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Yeah. 
Let the church bells ring, people celebrating the birth of a king. light our Advent candle this morning. I just want to remind you of uh, what we've been doing. As a congregation, we've been celebrating the diversity of gifts among us, including the many languages that members of our congregation speak. So this morning, Florence Minure and Susan and Isaac are going to come. Florence uh, is from Kenya and will be speaking in Kikuyo. Did I get it? Yes, I've been practicing. And so we invite Florence and Susan and Isaac up. Um, the words in English will be on the screen, and the words that we'll say together are the prayer at the end is in your bulletin. And we'll sing as a, a song at the end, uh, the word love will um, be instead of peace, which is what we used last week. So let's prepare our hearts as we hear them light the Advent candle. prayer this morning instead of sharing in joys and concerns I'm gonna leave space for you to add names um, for people that you would like prayed for so in the silence we invite you to either out loud or in your hearts name the special people that you're asking prayer for this morning let us pray 
God of grace and glory, we give you thanks for this day, this fourth Sunday in Advent, as we once again come to remember and to prepare for the birth of your Son. God, as we come into this place of worship, we come bringing many things. We come bringing joys and things that we are thankful for, for time spent with family and friends this week, for opportunities to serve you and to witness your glory. We give you thanks. We come also with burdens that we carry with us. We come asking prayers for those in need of healing whose names we lift before you now. We ask God that you would be with each of these whom we have named and those who remain in our hearts. We ask that your healing presence would be with them, that you would give wisdom to the doctors and nurses, to all of those who are serving them. We ask that you would work through the surgeries and rehab, the medicine and the rest, that your healing and your wholeness would be brought about. We pray for family members and friends as they wait and they worry, that you would fill them with your comfort and your peace. We come this day also remembering those who are mourning, who have lost loved ones during this past few weeks, and we lift their names before you now. We ask God that you would surround each of these with your loving arms, that you would fill them with your peace that passes all understanding, so that in the midst of their mourning, they would know your love and your grace. We lift up to you all of those uh, for whom this time of merriment is not merry. For those who struggle during this Christmas season, God, we ask for extra measures of peace and comfort. We ask that you would help them to find a small bit of your joy in the midst of their sadness. We lift up to you all of those who are struggling through job loss and transitions, those who are in need, and we thank you for every opportunity that you have given us to be your hands and feet in those situations. So we continue to pray for your provision for those who are in need, and that our eyes would be open to the ways that we might serve one another. We lift up to you our military, both here and abroad, and pray that as they serve and protect us, you would help us find ways to serve and protect them. We thank you, God, for each of the ways that you have been with us this week, for your present felt as we gathered together in Bible study and service, for your presence felt as we were with family members and friends who were in need, and for your presence felt in this place as we gather together to worship you. We thank you for the gift of song and for the way that it can speak to us when nothing else can. And so we pray that in these coming moments as we hear your story shared through song, that you would help us to hear it in a new way. Fill us with your joy that as we go forth into this week, we might celebrate you and your presence in our hearts. And we pray these things in the name of Christ our Savior, whose birth we await. And all of God's people said, Amen. I'm going to invite Frida to come, and she's going to speak to us for a short mission minute about our um, Cockeysville Food Pantry. Good morning. Um, whether you've noticed or whether you've contributed food items and seen them outside in the narthex in the mission corner and wondered, what are these for, or once we do this, where do they go? I'm here to tell you briefly about the Cockeysville Food Pantry. Once the food is donated, somebody, will, somebody from us within here will gather up all of the food and drive this over to Frames United Methodist Church on Mount Avenue in Phoenix, Maryland. And once the food ends up there, the women who donate their time there, and most of the time it's a, two women who spend their time there, they sort through the food, they have cabinets, they have freezers, they have refrigerators, they sort everything bit by bit, and then they're distributed to needy families in the Cockeysville community area. Every day there are hundreds of families who are underfed, malnourished, or hungry, just plain hungry, especially during the holidays and during the summer when school food, uh, schools are not open to provide free lunches. So how can you help? You can help by donating food items. Any item is always welcome, but I will give you a slight admonition. 
that Pastor Bill once said in speaking to someone, they always said it's great to get hamburger helper, but what good is a box of hamburger helper without hamburger? To that end, the Cockeysville Food Pantry has a freezer. They have two now, and they're able to collect and accept donations of money where someone can shop and fill the food pantry or not. So you can help in one of several, three different ways, four ways actually. First, by making food contributions in the back. Second, by making a monetary donation, and you can do that by your check to Epworth, and on the memo line, just put food pantry. Third, we need volunteers who will, once a month at least, drive the food over, and we'll tell you where and give you the phone number, and you can coordinate time. And fourth, to pray. Simply pray for all the families who are struggling to make ends meet, who go hungry to bed each night. Thank you. Life, I've held it in my hands. I've felt it slip through my fingers. I've been there when a baby draws his first breath. And I've been there as the last gasp of air escapes from a tired, dying body. Such is the joy and the helplessness of my work as a physician. Sometimes it seems that life was made for despair and death. But then I'm called to help with the birth of a child. I love to hear that first cry and hold the new baby in my hands. When I look into the newborn's face, I'm reminded that our God is a God of creation, of new beginnings. There's never been a birth so miraculous as when Jesus was born. When the eyewitnesses tell their stories of the event, you can sense the excitement and see the wonder in their eyes. I've carefully gathered and investigated these things. Now I set out to write an account so that others will know the gospel story. At the time of Christ's birth, the world was a dangerous place, full of repression, despair, and death. The Jews were continuously praying for God that he would quickly send them the promised Messiah to lift them from their suffering. In God's time, as the way had been prepared, God would come to earth in the form of a baby. And then, in a small town, very quietly, the Savior was born, once upon a night.
After that night, the world would never be the same. The birth would bring to the earth life, mystery, and power. Yet so many have not believed. I see it in their eyes as I try to share the story. That weary look of apathy, that empty stare. The world has drained them of their joy, all their sense of wonder and excitement. They are good people, but their faith has been torn away by some tragedy or perhaps by just the weariness of life. As the story begins, the Jews are a weary people. For years, they had prayed for a savior, a Messiah to come and restore Israel. And though prophets had pointed the way to the birth of Messiah, the people still waited. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were also waiting. For most of their lives, they had prayed to have a child, but they had no children and they were both well along in years. Once, when Zechariah was serving as priest before God, he was chosen to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. As he entered the temple, a crowd of worshipers remained outside, faithfully praying for the Messiah to come and save Israel. But Zechariah was struggling to keep his faith. He was so tired of life, and he wondered if God was listening. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the side of the altar. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice over his birth. He will go on before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to make ready a people prepared for the Lord.
his wife Elizabeth did become pregnant and was overjoyed. But Zachariah still couldn't say a word. He couldn't celebrate the greatest event of his life. Was his silence a punishment for not believing? Or was it simply that he could no longer testify to the power and miracles of God? Even now, as we go out to share the gospel, we see the same. We find that so many are perfectly faithful to the traditions of their faith, but they just can't accept the power of the gospel. They start out with such enthusiasm and devotion, but slowly lose their thirst for God and begin to substitute tradition for the Spirit's power. How different it was a few months later, when God once again sent out the angel Gabriel, this time to Nazareth, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. Her name was Mary. She was so young, so innocent, and ready to be used by God when the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you.
Soon afterward, Mary hurried down to see Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Together, they celebrated the two tiny lives they carried within them. Mary was so filled with gratitude, she overflowed with an exclamation of praise. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. When it was time for Elizabeth to give birth, her neighbors and relatives shared her joy, thinking they would name the child after his father, Zachariah. But Elizabeth said, no, his name is John. Zachariah, still not able to speak, joined her as he rode on a tablet, his name is John. 
Immediately his mouth was opened, and he began to praise God and prophesied, You, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him. The way was prepared for a holy visitation. As I write about the arrival of the Son of God, a warmth and excitement comes over me, for this was the moment when God came into the world in human form. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. It was an event that had been foretold for centuries. Now the time for the child to arrive had finally come.
And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Mary and Joseph were overwhelmed with joy, but they were a long way from home. How they wished their family and friends could be there to celebrate the birth with them. Here in this strange town, they huddled alone in a stable. But they wouldn't be alone for long. Angels would invite shepherds to celebrate their birth. Shepherds' lives were hard and filled with drudgery. They were near the bottom of the social ladder, but they were chosen first to see the newborn Messiah. This night would change their lives and give them a story to tell to the end of their days.
As the shepherds went out glorifying and praising God, the parents were once again left alone with their baby. Mary pondered all these things in her heart. She peered into her baby's face and was amazed at how God had blessed her. She thought of the future, how she would raise this child in what could be a very dangerous world. Though she knew there would be challenges, still she trusted God for the future. As she watched him sleep, just for this moment, in this place, all in the world seemed right.
On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, the child was named Jesus. Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with the law of the Lord. There was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. When the parents brought Jesus into the temple, the Spirit moved Simeon to take the child in his arms and praise God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss me, your servant, in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for a revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Mary pondered all that had been said about her child, but one of the things that Simeon had said to her kept echoing in her mind. This child is destined to cause the falling and rising again of many in Israel, and a sword will pierce your soul. A sword will pierce your soul. I've wondered if Mary and Elizabeth stayed in touch. Their sons would face some dangerous days. Elizabeth's little son, John, would grow up to preach in the desert. He would call people to repent and prepare for the coming of the Lord. But because of his preaching, he would be imprisoned and ultimately beheaded. Mary was there to see her son fulfill John's preaching through many wonderful miracles and teachings. But she was also there when the religious leaders became so threatened by Jesus, they put him to death on the cross. People ask me, which was more important, Christ's birth 
or his death on the cross? There is no answer. He came to the world to live, to die, to rise again, and to be with us forever through the Holy Spirit. I pray that through every breath I take, through every day I live, I will be a witness of this wonderful story of God's heavenly love. In this life, we know there will be time for suffering, there will be time for pain, and I will describe all of this in my account of Jesus' life. But for now, I am overwhelmed by the miracle of this birth. Though the days may be dark and the times challenging, we know that we are not alone in this world. We may live in joy and celebration. Through this child, God has visited the earth and his spirit lives among us today.
Lord. We, we give thanks to God for all the work that they have put to pull this together. Uh, as you know, we uh, had a transition in choir director, so Elaine came in a little bit late to start rehearsals for Cantata, so the, the amount of work that they were able to pull off in this time, it was just beautiful. You know, I've been listening to Cantatas now as a pastor for 10 years. I think this is definitely in like the top three favorites of my katad. It was beautiful, beautiful. All of you did a wonderful job. Let's stand together and we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together. It'll be printed on the screen and then we're going to sing Handel's Messiah Hallelujah Chorus together. So let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's remain standing as we sing the Alleluia Chorus together. If you don't know it, you just listen, because it's beautiful. You can either sing it from where you are, or you can come up and join us. We have copies. We'll let you just sort of slide into the crowd. Type it. I forgot to recognize Sylvia. That was it.
to love God and serve one another. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Nice going there.